fun. We gon' mess up the night. I, we go, we go up to you. We gon' do it fine. We're it up to you. Whatever it is. We keep on falling in love. Yeah, yeah. We gon' fall in love. What's up, y'all? It's your man Rico. Pardon me one second. Hold on a second, y'all. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, another one of these nice, crisp, late fall, early winter days. But it's, it's, it's pleasant. I like it. Had to do with just put on a, uh, just a regular jacket. I'm going to get through this. I'm not going to belabor y'all. Y'all know how I can get long-winded. And uh, I'm going to just knock out three topics. Just go ahead. Y'all go ahead and keep eating your lunch. You don't have to put your spoons down, your forks down, your knives down, or and put your sandwich down. Go ahead. This is a little chat and chew for lunch. Welcome. Because I haven't done one of these in a while. A chat and chew with Rico. I'll chat as y'all chew. You ready? Um, just three, three quick topics I want to run across, run across to you or share with you all. Hey, Linda, what's happening? Uh, I'll start with Kelly Rowland. <clears throat> now, yeah, if, as we recall, I guess last week, you know, when they canceled Chris Brown's performance at the American Music Awards or Billboard's Awards, whatever those awards were, uh, it was the 40th anniversary of the Thriller album or something, and, Mike, and um, Michael Jackson Thriller album, and Chris Brown had had this elaborate routine already ready to go, and at the last minute they canceled it and. But all of a sudden, they want to bring up the whole Rihanna case shit that happened like 12 years ago. With him and Rihanna's uh, domestic dispute or domestic violence incident. And that was the beginning of creating, uh, using the black male as the face of domestic violence. Yeah. <clears throat> and anything that's bad with America, they, they, they're replacing the white faces with black male faces. Y'all paid attention to that? Uh, sexual predator, I guess R. Kelly now, and when Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis Presley, as if they never existed. But that's what's going on, and we're not paying attention because we're trying to be, we're so busy trying to be American that we stop being black, and that's the problem. So when you concentrate on yourself, you all, you all, you're able to defend yourself, and, and you're able to recognize when outsiders or people who are not friends of yours, shout out to Dr. John Henry Clark, says we have no friends, are trying to play you. And so we've sat here and allowed all of these heinous behaviors in American, in American culture and the fabric of America to become replaced with our black faces. So, yeah, I'm talking about Chris Brown. When that whole thing went down, I didn't get up in arms at Chris Brown about that because if you ever follow Rihanna on social media or followed her, just listen to the way she behaves, Rihanna's a smart mouth and she was always talking about how she was hurt because her father wasn't there. So... We all know that when girls don't grow up with their dads and they hate their dads, they have a problem with men. They don't respect men as much. So we haven't said that. <clears throat> and after we heard Chris Brown's side of what actually happened, you know, they didn't want to let it go at that. They want to continue to bring it up as if it's an original story and still try to punish him for some mess that even Rihanna didn't even come out on him. If y'all remember, go back when she was interviewing with Oprah. She just said, no, I don't hate Chris. I just want him to get help. Four-headed helper, you needed help too. Because according to the reports of what he shared, you can't be grabbing nobody's nuts. You can't be hitting people all in the face while they're driving because you saw a text message from a woman he was supposed to be having a, an affair with. I don't know who told women that it was okay because you get your feelings hurt or because someone cheats on you that it's okay for you to commit battery against a man and he's supposed to sit there and allow you to literally damn near kill him. I don't know if you fathers are teaching this to y'all boys, your son ain't gonna live that long. Cause these chicks are stabbing, running over people, gouging out eyes, cutting off uh, body parts, all because you think there's a man to allow a woman to beat on you. I don't give a damn if you are three times her size, you make sure you pulverize that little violent heifer. So she remind herself, I'm a woman. But see, we don't give the benefit of that level of equality. If she comes at you with equal rights, you have the right to respond with equal lefts. And all this foolishness about, you know, well, you know, that's a woman, that's a female. 
Well, she knew she was a female. She was scratching him all up inside his face and grabbing him in the ball. So he got out. He just got upset. And then also, we just going to pretend that Chris Brown didn't come from somewhere either. He came from a place of domestic violence, watching his mom get beat by different boyfriends. And y'all know the emotional impact that that is on, the ch on children, let alone sons. It creates an anger. It creates a low self-esteem. It creates a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. And so... He didn't know how to react to that, 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 that undergirdling of rage that, that was in him. And so both of them exploded that night, but somehow he got to be drugged to the ground and her career just blossomed. If y'all don't think that's sexism and gender bias, because they wouldn't let him tell his story. And then all of a sudden on black radio and all this stuff, Steve Harvey going to say, they're my daughter, I'll beat his ass. You know, because Steve Harvey one of them buck tooth beavers. They want to just talk about how bad he is, but got about 12 bodyguards. Shut up, T.I. I mean, uh, uh, Steve Harvey. Uh, <clears throat> so, having said that, the man's career went down. Chris Brown was the next in line to be the heir to the throne of the king of pop. The government, government commercials and, excuse me, miss... Sorry, from across the room, he, all that cool stuff. And then all of a sudden, we thought this human being was supposed to respond like some kind of elevated person when he had nobody around him Say, hey man, go to therapy. Hey man, don't worry about that. You know, Chris Brown just went down. And now if you notice, when America canceled Chris Brown, his music changed. People, uh, he stopped getting corporate endorsements and partnerships like he had at first. All of a sudden, Chris Brown's music changed to that of some real hood, over-sexualized gang kind of foolishness. And next thing you know, Chris Brown got 1,200 tattoos looking like, looking like a light-skinned bird man. And all of a sudden, we started noticing him noticeably being high on weed or pills. Just took him down. And so... All of a sudden now, you no, know, he got a chance to do the performance on BET. The man cried on BET, snot and tears and everything. Got past it. But let me tell y'all something. Y'all think racism and white supremacy is not real? White people, are, they're very calculating. No, we're not going to let him outdo Elvis. So we're going to drag up some stuff that was settled and done with a long time ago. Ser seriously done with. <laughs> done. But they didn't want to, but, but in the instant, this white blonde woman by the name of Amber Heard, damn to beat the holy hell out of um, the guy who played in Pirates of the Caribbean. And they got him, got her on, on voice, voice messages and text messages of how violent she was to him. But America didn't really cancel her because she's going to be in a couple of more movies. Amber Heard, that's a little bitch name. And I forget his name real quick, but I'll, I'll remember. I'll get it in a minute. He's in the Savage commercials. They even got upset because Rihanna invited him to be in her Fenty um, modeling troupe. Him now, not Amber Heard, him. So y'all don't think there's an anti-masculine man problem in America? Okay. So I said all that to say to give y'all a little background. <sighs> oh, how I thought he was unfairly treated. I didn't like the way his music went down here. I like that other Chris Brown. And I hopefully after this, Chris Brown can be back on his, on his way to being the heir apparent. He even tried to put out some decent music. They wouldn't push it. He had a song called Crawl. It was a very good song. Then he had another song out. It's called Fine China. Excellent song. But boom. They didn't want to push it. The industry didn't want to push that. They meant they were going to cancel this guy because they knew how talented he was and still is apparently. I saw the Instagram footage of him putting that uh, performance that he would have done on the Billboard, American Music Awards, whatever the hell it was. And then when he won Favorite R&B Male, Kelly Rowland accepted and said, hey, and they tried someone, they tried to halfway slip Booty Man. Now, again, Chris Brown been off the scene, no problems, you know, except for his... I guess it's preference for light-skinned women and mixed women. I guess just to have a problem with that, but who cares? It's called a preference. And so, Chris was not allowed to perform. And Kelly Rowland said, when they were trying to boo him, she's like, hey, hey, hold on, whoa, whoa. 
Chris Brown, thank you so much for making great R&B music. You are you're awesome. You're wonderful. And so, TMZ called a widow. She said, "Hey, everybody deserves grace." No, I, you know, and, and they tried to get her to, I guess, change her stance on what she said on the show, but she still had his back. And that's the kind of stuff that more sisters of her caliber should do. You know, instead of going along with the stereotypes and because one black dude hurt you, let's, let's, let's join the other side to destroy them all. Even when it's not right. And so they have no little, little comments and articles and all these folks trying to get mad at Kelly Rowland. And now, and Kelly Rowland, you know, maybe I'm being biased. But I've always loved Kelly Rowland. And I need y'all to back up off Kelly Rowland. You know, what she said was appropriate. Because obviously no one else is standing up for Chris Brown. Even during the time he's supposed to be so black. Black community is standing up for him. They all joined that narrative. He's a domestic abuser. He's a domestic abuser. That's domestic violence. Poor Rihanna. Poor Rihanna. You know, no. I love Kelly Rowland. Even when Destiny Child first came out with it, 96, 97, or something like that, it was Kelly Rowland and Latavia. Those are my two favorites. Of course, Beyonce was there. She was cool. She was banging a little something. But I love Latavia and Kelly Rowland. Then when Latavia left, it was, I don't know, Kelly Rowland. And she's just done nothing but become more and more gorgeous and more and more gracious, more and more just a lady. And this woman is a little over 40. Was she 41? 42? And this, this woman is beautiful. And I just hate that a point, at, at a long period of her life that she didn't protect her life. She wasn't a fan of her beautiful chocolate skinness until she had to be told. I think she, uh, Beyonce's mom told her, girl, you're beautiful. What are you doing? You tripping. And she's really grown into her beautiful chocolatey ness. Nice, slender, tender. Kept stayed in shape. She's gorgeous. This woman is a little over 40. And she's making some of these, these current 24, 25, 30 year olds just look like, look like they got more work to do. Love Kelly Rowland. I can't help it. You know, married, children. She's awesome. Uh, not like some of her music, too. She's just, she's just an awesome lady. And so, yeah, for those of you who got something side out to say about Kelly Rowland, y'all better watch out, man. Watch your mouth. Love for Kelly Rowland. She can defend Chris Brown. Hell, I'll defend Chris Brown. Hell. Because uh, he, he, he's not the face of domestic violence. If you understand American history, if you just look around, you know damn well he's not the face of domestic violence. Let me go to, and I, that's all I want to say about that part. Shout out to to Kelly Rowland for sticking up for the brother, using her platform to stick up for the brother. Now let me get to LeBron James. Y'all hear what he said yesterday, right? Or this week, yesterday. He told the media, he said, wow, we've been here all this time. Y'all, y'all ain't asking me nothing about Jerry Jones. Y'all ask me, hey, whenever a black dude gets in trouble or all, you know, gets in trouble or y'all don't agree what he stands for or agree what he said, his, play, his face, his image, Everything is plastered all over the media. Well, the only thing he left out was white media. And all of the tabloids, all the news coverages. Oh, he called them out pretty good. He said, no, y'all ain't got to say nothing. And so that, that silence over the room came. And see, that's right, that right there is why they, get, they go so hard against these black athletes who are really famous. Because they don't use you. They don't need you to try to motivate or expose any truths about the dirt about America's racism. You know, they need you to entertain and to push weird agendas like <laughs> a lot of LGBT agendas. That's what they need these famous black dudes for. And LeBron James came out and said that. I'll give him props for half a props for saying that. Because, you know, in my book, I still don't trust LeBron James because even a broken, a broken clock is right, well, at least twice a day. And I already know what side LeBron James is on. But, see, they still have the luxury of trying to say something cool when all that extra heat get on their ass for totally selling out. And LeBron James has done that a lot. And please, those of you who keep saying LeBron James has done more for the black community as anybody, he ain't done shit. LeBron James worth a half a trillion dollars. How, where are the school? No, y'all talking about that school he just put his face on, but everybody there that worked there or, or who's on the board is white? LeBron James ain't done shit compared to what he could be doing with being worth a half a, tri half a billion, half a trillion dollars. 
Y'all don't know what giving back is, don't you? <laughs> Coming up, showing up, and giving basketball to, 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 to uh, poor black kids and not giving back, dumb dumb, when you're worth damn near a billion dollars. Look at the white community and Jewish community. They give back with institutions. They give back with changing or challenging the systems that may be uh, creating a disadvantage to their people. Not going out and doing a, a hello and how are you speaking thing. Not putting stuff on Netflix where they're a bunch of black dudes talking in a barbershop. That's not giving back to the black community. Hell, the people who didn't have the money gave back to more than these black famous people give back. And they ain't had him as money. Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. Naeem Akbar, Dr. Joy Leary, Dr. Julia Hare, Dr. Nathan Hare. The scholars are giving back more to the black community than any one of you fa these famous blacks. Rico, what have you given? I ain't worth no half a trillion dollars. I'm giving the knowledge that, uh, uh, <laughs> that blacks don't want. But if I had it, I'll show you how it's supposed to be done. So y'all stop letting these black, these billionaire, half a billionaire, half a trillionaire black celebrities get off the hook because they give out 500 t-shirts to four black kids on Medicaid. Y'all are just so dumb, so low in your, in your standards. So yeah, I, I, I give you that little half little, you know, try to uh, correct you selling out Kyrie Irving because you read the Jewish script where he hurt a lot of people. He hurt people when he said, just shut up, LeBron. And any other black celebrity, Charles Barkley and Shannon, Shay Shay, what kind of big 220 pound Negro with muscles in his fingernails calls himself Shay Shay? And y'all take this Negro seriously? Get out of here. And every time you see him, he, all he does is push black stereotypes, drinking Hennessy and smoking a cigar. Nig, nig, man, please. That's not being black, Shannon Sharp. If y'all know what, want to know what black is, read the story of Nat Turner. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Meg Evers, read their stories. You know what black men are. Muhammad Ali, John Carlos. <laughs> y'all don't do no reading. That's why we be letting these little slackers slide by with, with little or nothing. Yeah, they're under a system. They can't talk. They bought off and bootlick ass boys. They can't do, say anything outside this system. But y'all notice, let's go back to the LeBron James. Let me tell you something that y'all don't pay attention to. Yeah, he said that. But before they were able to ask him, he got up and walked off. See, that's, see, that's called playing, no, being slick. Yeah, you brought up the question, but he still protected his own ass. Because had, they, had he allowed them to ask him about Jerry Jones, then <laughs> the bullshit would have popped off. See, y'all pay attention to these little slicksters who've been, in, been under that white corporate system. They think everybody, they think people are stupid. LeBron James doesn't have the IQ of a turtle shell. But they you know he's a very physical and, and gifted athlete. And so that's why they push them more so than the intellectuals in our race. More than the African centered intellectuals, not these Talisi Coates, whatever his name is. And all them folks and Dr. Mark, Mark Lamont Hill, who's, who says out loud that a, that a man can get pregnant and have a period. Retarded. Oh, God. Those are the blacks that they push, them so called black Negro intellectuals. And there's been studies done, the problem with the Negro intellectual. I think uh, W.B. Du Bois spoke about that. And I brought him up too, said everybody at some point makes some sense. <laughs> you know, and W.B. Du Bois uh, made a point 57, 70 years ago. So, y'all, so he didn't really... He used a part of his platform to throw out that little thing, but if they, if he allowed them, those, cause they were ready to ask his ass some questions. They said, okay, you said that, but no, no, I don't want to hear, no, don't say nothing now. So they gave him a chance to make that quick, hurried exit. Y'all pay attention. Dr. Neely Fuller told us, racism, white supremacy. If you don't know what it looks like or its agenda, everything else you see would only confuse you. I'm so glad I got a chance to study and learn under Dr. Francis Cress Welsing and Dr. Neely and Brother Neely Fuller. I got a chance to meet both of those scholars. May they continue to rest in peace. And those are the people y'all need to be teaching the black children. So, you be, so what you see, you're able to look past and look straight through it. And thirdly, let me say this. Uh, what is the addiction that black men seem to have with NFL and NBA? Now, it's clear that Jerry Jones has had a history of being anti-black male. 
And y'all think because white folks hire you that they have they carry some kind of favor with you and they hope that you produce for your race and become equal to the actual system? No, everybody likes a worker and a laborer. Everybody likes that. Let me give y'all an example. My grandmother used to clean up some white people's houses, right? And rest in peace, Grandma, my, to my Grammy. And my grandmother, I guess they were paying her okay. And my grandmother earned enough money where she can buy her a new car. Because she was driving her old little, she was brown, I think she was driving her little old little monarch. She had a Granada, a little brown, little, no, but it got her here and there. But my grandma messed around and bought, at that time, was it a, a, a 93 or a 92, somewhere like that, between a 90 and 92 brand new off the lot Toyota Camry with all the bells and whistles. My grandma drove that car to work to the, to the white folks, the white couple that she worked with, you no know, clean up the house, babysit their kids and shit like that. And within a couple of weeks, the wife of the house told us to, um, such and such, Miss Rivers, um, things have gotten kind of tight around here, so we're going to have to subtract about two or three of your days. They started subtracting my grandma's days. As long as she was driving that little, I guess considered a beat-up car, they were secure and they were fine. But then as soon as she was able to purchase a car that almost looked equal to what was in their driveway, they, they cut her days short. And that is America when it ends relates to black folk. They don't mind you making $150,000 as long as they keep making $800,000. They don't mind paying an athlete $40 million a year as long as they keep making the half a billion dollars a year. And when you look like you're getting equal to them, watch their attitude change. And so that's why when they hire these, they hire or select these black athletes, you can shuck and jive all you want to a Negro male. You can, well, and then we have a few things we need you to do. But the moment you start acting as if you're actually equal to us and you start, number two, empowering the men and women of your race, we're going to change on your ass. And these black athletes understand that. They act all good and tough when they're around as us, but when they get out, just like black, corporate, black folks who work in corporate America. Yes, sir. Of course. Yes. I'll, I'll get right on it. Yeah. And I think that, ah, uh, then when they get around you. Man, these mother up and begging in words and man, man, we try to man, pay me that mother loving whiskey. Oh, they get all hood and ignorant. I know this has been going on. So luckily, I've been able to be a man at work and be a man at home. But, and then this whole thing about man, you got to do what you got to do. I get that too. But damn, doing what you got to do or us doing what we got to do has not garnished in too many results for our race in this country. So we're going to have to start making a choice. If you want to be free or we're going to continue to be sub, subpar and subclass and subservial to other groups. Because other groups come in and go straight for equality. We're the ones that's glad to be here. And that's going to have to stop. That's what these black celebrities, black athletes, professionals, they're all, they all understand the assignment when they start working for Whitey on that level. And number three, uh, see, one, two, see, Kelly Rowland. LeBron James. Oh, yeah, the black men. Black men, again. <clears throat> you know, I knew some. I've always thought something particularly wrong with black men in America. It's least to their, their guts and their, and their courage or lack thereof. Uh, we got a lot of smoke for each other. And y'all remember I, on a few uh, lives ago or articles that I wrote on my page and stuff? that compared black men's addiction to football, NFL, to black women's addiction to weave. And it is a perfect, uh, perfect comparison. Now, when Colin Kaepernick, a biracial NFL star at the time, was standing up doing what black men, who also in NFL, absolutely refused to do. Because they worried about their paychecks. I got to feed my family. Motherfucker, your signing bonus fed your family. You've been in the league eight, nine goddamn years. What you talking about? But they let this biracial guy stand up and say, look, the, 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 the murdering of unarmed men by cops arbitrarily is wrong. And there were black men who were afraid to stand with this guy who's standing up for an issue that actually impacts them, not Colin Kaepernick, because they don't be killing biracial, upper class, middle class, biracial, or even a poor biracial dude, unless he acts like a hood black dude. Come on, 
that little what's that little skinny black dude uh that was killed in uh uh minnesota that little skinny boy and that white woman cop shot him when the when the black cop out had he was a biracial dude acting hood now if he had been behaving as a biracial guy with some sense he could ride out ride dirt and everything else the cops would have pulled him over do y'all understand so it's always about black men now if you want to be a white boy or a biracial dude light-skinned biracial dude to act like the inner city of the hood black man well that's on you and you get parted and then all of a sudden when he gets killed the cops killed an unarmed black man they didn't kill an unarmed they didn't kill a, a black teenager they killed a, a, a biracial teenager who tried to act like a black hood dude and everybody know that's that's shit plans for disaster <laughs> uh so but black men Y'all didn't, you refused to protest the NFL, stop buying the tickets, stop going to games, stop buying the jerseys, stop supporting the teams. When all of the owners, and those of you who hate Trump so much, all of the NFL owners supported Trump. So it's interesting. I said, well, since y'all hate Trump so much, why y'all still supporting these NFL owners who are all white? This, I'm, I posed this question to black men. That's why I can't hardly take you guys seriously. A lot of you. You know, that, that those white owners all supported Trump. Number two, Jerry Jones said that any any one of my one of my guys, one of my players there, kneel and stand up and protest of the anthem, they'll all be fired. That's what he told the black guys. And maybe a, a couple or a few probably trickled down. But the masses, the, the NFL is 8% black men playing. Hell, even if 60% of y'all got on got on code and said, fuck y'all, and walked off because y'all already had money, that would have made a difference. So there's been plenty of chances for an insurrection or a revolution, but that, that plantation experience has beaten the fight out of black people. We're afraid. And just tell me this. I'm afraid of the white man. I'm afraid of going to jail, but I'll jump, on, jump down a nigger's throat in a minute. And that's when I realized black men are afraid of this white establishment. They're afraid. You know, and black women are running wild because black women understand that, you know, that nobody really, they don't just jump on women. Because black men understand they've been taught by the mothers that they was raised in the system itself. Don't get out of your place, boy. Even these old movies that show, to teach black boys, don't look a white man in the eye. Don't eyeball him. They, they, that training is still there. Even the toughest, meanest gang member thug, scared of white men, scared of white folks. And so when we ask, well, how come black men aren't standing with Kyrie? Because they're scared. Now, they act tough as shit with another black man because they know there's no penalty for attacking another black man. But even the, the, the meanest, so-called toughest street thug, dope boy, every gang member, they don't play with white men and white people. And that's something we're going to have to work on. You know, we won't even politically stand up against. So I'm just saying, what is this addiction y'all have, black men? Well, just say you're scared. God damn. And, and, and black men stand around just like everyone else, stand around and watch one black person stand up to the system. Kyrie didn't have to stand up by himself that long when, when all of us agreed with him, especially black men in the NBA. You had the vice president of the National Basque Basketball Association Union he stood up for him, but what the hell was the president of the National Basketball Association Players League? And then they replaced all of them and got a black chick who's the executive director of the whole thing. What is a woman doing to being the executive director of a men's league? Yeah, I said it. Or oh, a men's association that's supposed to be protecting the players. And she got right on in there and said, it's okay, y'all. We got it back in order, master. We're going to get these niggas back in check. And that's what she did. Y'all go look up the black chick. And so black men, a lot of stuff is on us because we're just standing around. I, I always accuse the black community as a whole, and particularly black women, of, of waiting on Jesus to come back and, and solve this thing. But no, black men, y'all the ones that's waiting on Jesus. Because there's a lot of stuff that we could crush as a group. But I guess we're going to have to stop that group thing because when stuff starts impacting us, we think individually, we all, as a group, say, no, I'll wait and see what happens. So anyway, black men, maybe y'all need to go to just share that. And I hope y'all, hey, go out and purchase my book. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. Abs uh, conversation absent biological father who never wanted to be found. It's
pretty good. It's a short story. It's only like 50 pages. $10. Hit me on that cash app. Dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. O P I N I O N I S T. And if you decide to you no know, hit that cash app, uh, send an email address because it's PDF. I can email it to you as soon as you uh, hit your boat at that $10. But y'all go back to enjoying your lunch. I think I'm going to grab me a bite. I'm going to chew along with y'all. But uh, anyway, y'all be cool. We'll talk again in the future. Enjoy this beautiful, semi-crispy day. All right? Peace, y'all.